People are very upset about a swimmer at the University of Pennsylvania competing against women, even though the swimmer is biologically male. At an event in Akron, the swimmer completely destroyed the competition and set many records. So today on The Sovereign States, we are going to talk about transgenderism in sports. Welcome to the Sovereign States. My name is Brian. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you're doing well today. So as I said at the forefront, transgenderism in sports is going to be today's topic. So transgenderism is a really difficult issue, uh, especially when it comes to sports. And there are no easy answers that you're going to find along these lines. So you just need to abandon some utopian vision about how all this is going to just pan out. Everyone's going to be happy and so forth. There are no easy answers, and there is not a solution to this issue that's going to please everybody. There's probably not a solution out there that's really going to completely please anybody. When it comes to transgenderism, I'm actually pretty libertarian uh, or classically liberal. I don't like the term libertarian because it's associated with a political party, and I hate political parties. So when, just like with most things, I'm pretty classically liberal when it comes to this. Uh, your life is yours. Your body is yours. Pursue happiness as you see fit, provided that you're not impacting anybody else's pursuit of happiness, or I should say, uh, keeping them from pursuing happiness uh, along the same lines. And transgenderism doesn't do that. Okay, somebody choosing to live their life as a, a man, as a woman, to modify their appearance, uh, however, to dress a certain way, to act a certain way, to have certain um, beliefs and values and so on, does not impact me at all. So I say, you do you. If that is going to help you live a fulfilled and abundant life to pursue happiness uh, in the best way possible for you, more power to you. I applaud you. Go for it and, um, you know, just just live your life. Uh, gender dysphoria, it is a mental health condition it, it, uh, that needs to be acknowledged. These people are dealing with an issue that I can't even begin to understand. And I'm not going to try. I can't. Um, and we and these people need to be met with compassion and understanding about what they're what they're going through, and and let them deal with it in the best way for them is is the way I see it. Um, it does create issues. Um, you know, there's this issue with sports that we're going to talk about. There's also the bathroom issue, which I don't really see as a big of an issue as many of the. Folks on the conservative side seem to. I don't think it's as big of a deal as uh, as people like to make out. And there are solutions to that problem. We're not going to go into it today. Sports, unfortunately, is an exception. Uh, sports is an issue when it comes to transgenderism. Now, despite what the critical theorists uh, say about gender, there are fundamental differences between the sexes if you live in reality instead of clown world. There are differences between men and women. Now, these are tendencies. They're not requirements. Your manhood or your womanhood is not wrapped up in these things. It doesn't make you less of a man or less of a woman to not kind of fit into these, uh, these tendencies. But just the same, these are the, how it, the way it tends to be with, with men and women. Men tend to be naturally stronger than women, like physically stronger, that is, in general. It's not true for all, obviously, uh, but it is for most. Most men are just going to be naturally physically stronger than most women. That's just a fact of life. You cannot get rid of that biological marker no matter what you do. Okay? Now, there are plenty of women out there that are way stronger than me. I'm not a big, I'm not a big dude. Okay? There are plenty of women out there that are stronger than me. Uh, there are pl uh, plenty of you know, women out there that are stronger than a lot of men. But just in general, just naturally without some serious training and bodybuilding and that kind of thing, most men are going to tend to be nat physically stronger than women, uh, thicker bone density, and, and so on. More natural muscle. That being the case, men can uh, perform naturally at a higher level in most sports than women uh, of equal skill and experience. 
It's just the way it is. It, it, there's no getting around that. And it's not that the women aren't great athletes. They are. Um, like take up, take up, take female tennis players. Okay. For example, any female tennis player out there with any sort of skill or experience could smoke me any day. Cause I'm not a good tennis player. Any one of them, but you put a man with an equal amount of skill or experience. And most of the time they're just going to completely annihilate the female tennis player. And it's not because she's not good. It's just he has an unfair advantage. This is exactly why we separate uh, men's and women's sports to make it fair and make it more competitive and make it uh, to where it's, uh, you know, the women would have a chance. That was the point John McEnroe was trying to make. Now, did he make it well? Did he make it, you know, with, with, in the kindest way? But I don't know. I, I, I can't remember the interview. I just know that he made it. He wasn't wrong. And they tried to just obliterate him. They tried to destroy him and cancel him. And if I remember correctly, I think he refused to apologize, which is exactly what you should do. Don't ever apologize to these people. Not ever. Okay? Now, if you were a jerk and you, you know, went out of your way to be a jerk, that's different. But if you just set, told the truth, said something that's obviously true to anyone who's not blinded by their ideology, then don't apologize. Ever. He was right. John McEnroe was right. Most professional male tennis players would just completely destroy most female ten uh, professional tennis players. And it's not because the females aren't good. They're, it's not because they aren't as equally skilled or experienced or, or anything of the sort as the men. That's not it. It's because they just don't have the same physical capability as most men tend to have. It Because men and women are just built differently. If you want another example, a perfect example of this, take the Australian women's soccer team. These these women these uh, women soccer players are fantastic. They are incredible players. Okay, just ridiculous at their sport. As a matter of fact, the Australian women's soccer team was fifth in the world. They played a team of fifteen-year-old boys, non-professionals, fifteen-year-olds still in school. And these women have been playing together for a long time. Fifth in the world. The Australian women's soccer team were was beaten by seven to nil. <laughs> seven nil against a 15-year-old squad of boys. If, you, if, you, if that is not proof enough to you, I don't know what is. I, I just, I don't know. But let's read this article. Some flowery language in this one, folks. Um, biological man, this is from Daily Wire, by the way. Biological man swimming for UPenn's uh, women's team utterly destroys young women in competition. You don't say. Who would have thunk it? Anyway. Over the weekend, a swimmer from the University of Pennsylvania who swam competitively for the men's team for three years before... I, I think that's actually incorrect. I think it was two years. Or maybe it was three Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, swam for three years before switching to the women's team, destroyed the biological women in the competition, winning the 1650 free by a gargantuan 38 seconds. Anyone who's ever watched swim in the Olympics, that does not happen most of the time, even on the long swims. You don't have people beating everybody else by 38 seconds. That doesn't happen. Okay, Maybe once in a blue moon, but that is that does not happen. Um 38 seconds ahead of the young woman finishing second, winning the 500 free by a whooping, whop, uh, whooping 12, whopping? It doesn't matter. By 12 seconds ahead of the woman finishing second and winning the 200 free by a still huge seven seconds. These margins are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Again, these kind of margins just, do, this just does not happen in swimming that often. I've watched enough Olympic swimming to know that. If it's a you know if it's a fair competition, um, Leah Thomas, who as Will Thomas, who you know Leah's is, is um, uh, this person's name now, who as Will Thomas swam for the men's team the prior three years, left Akron, which was where the event was held, with the nation's fastest two hundred freestyle time. Now, I don't know if that means fastest ever, but uh, the nation's top time in the five hundred free and. 
1650 time that would have had Thomas in the finals at the 2021 NCAA championships. And so on and so on. Uh, her results in all three races set new pin records along with meet and pull records and so forth. Now, people are not happy about this because they see it as patently unfair, which it is. And here's some of the responses again. This is, I didn't write this, okay? Doesn't everybody see how absolutely insane this is? Shouldn't all the female swimmers refuse to compete in these unfair matches? Any girl who is supposed to race against this, they use the male terms, uh, should walk off at the sound of the start of each race. This is bull S word. We need to stop this nonsense. It's a, this is just what this person said. It's a freaking guy describer. Uh, why do we put up with this? Some of these, and some of these comments are not not nice. Okay. I'm just going to go out and say it. Listen, I know this is a difficult issue. I know that it's uh, but let's, let's at least be, try to be nice. Let's try to be kind. Okay. Uh, now NCAA is going to defend it uh, all day long because it, it, it's because of politics. Okay. Unless they're fools, they know that this is wrong. They know that this is unfair, but they can't do anything about it because of politics. They're afraid they're going to get, uh, um, canceled and annihilated and all this kind of stuff, which I don't like the NCAA anyway, but, <laughs> getting canceled for this is ridiculous. Uh, the NCAA stipulates a trans female, which is male to female, a student athlete being treated with testosterone suppression medication for gender identity disorder or gender dysphoria and or transsexualism uh, for the purposes of NCAA competition may continue to compete on a men's team but may not compete on a women's team without changing it to a mixed team status until completing one calendar year of testosterone suppression treatment. Now, I'm no expert on the science behind these testosterone suppression drugs and treatments and uh, I don't know, okay? But if you're already 20 years old and you've had 20 years living your life as a man and you start taking these type of drugs for a year, is that really going to eliminate all the physical advantages you've already built up in your first 20 years of life? I have a really hard time believing that. And I think the proof is in the pudding here. I think the evidence is right in front of you. So, as I said, this is patently unfair. All of these women have to know that. Now, m many of them probably won't speak up because uh, they're either buying into this, this leftist narrative, this uh, gender theory crap themselves, or they're just afraid. Now, there's some, there's some ladies up in Connecticut, high school students, who were not afraid, and they sued uh, over this kind of stuff. Good for them. Um, but these, these college athletes, the, the first message I read, they're right. As soon as the horn blows, they should just step off the podium and just let, let this, uh, this swimmer go by themselves because this is unfair. And they should say like, we're not going to swim anymore because there's no point. There's no point in swimming anymore. If, if this is what we're going to have to, if this is what we're going to have to do, this is how the competition is going to be, you know. These women have to speak up, though. They have to speak out and say this is unfair. If all of them did it, if all of them refused to compete, and not to hurt, not to hurt this other swimmer. Okay, this is not about the other swimmer. The other swimmer is following the rules. They're doing what the swimmer is doing. Um, well, what what the swimmer thinks that that you know they should do. I you know it's kind of hard to hold <laughs> to get upset about that. It's the rules that are the problem here. In practically all aspects of, of, of human life, a, a, a biological man choosing to live uh, his, her, whatever, life as a woman doesn't matter. That's fine. Go for it. You know, if that makes you more comfortable, fine. But unfortunately, sports is an exception. You can't in order to, quote-unquote, be fair to the transgender person, you can't be unfair to everybody else. That's wrong. It is wrong to do that. I don't care what the NCAA says. Again, I think they're doing it for political reasons. I don't care what the gender theorists say. They're nuts. Anyway, they're wrong. They are flat-out wrong in this particular case. This is not fair. Now, 
the proof in this particular situation is this. Leah Thomas, when competing against men, was a good swimmer. Okay? Uh, Leah Thomas did really well. But Leah Thomas was not annihilating everybody. Wasn't beating everybody by 38 seconds in the 1653. Now, switches to competing against women. Leah Thomas is blowing everybody away. How did that happen, I wonder? That alone is all the evidence you need. So if you don't think the biological maleness of Leah Thomas has nothing to do with it, you're out of your freaking mind. You're out of your mind. Again, there, there's no solution to this that's going to make everybody happy. Okay? This is an incredible... But th this is so unfair and so wrong to treat these women this way who were probably doing really, really well. They're at the top of their game and all of a sudden they're having to compete against this individual and they can't compete anymore. So doing that to all the women who are competing to satisfy the individual inclinations of the few trans athletes to me is just it's just wrong. Okay? Now, the going to the gender theorists now, the, the reason the gender theorists are so dedicated to squashing dissent in this area is because the basic reality of, of gender, the basic reality of the differences between men and women, it just flies in the face of their theory. And everything they do, any critical theorist does, must serve the theory. It must promote and put forth the theory because the theory has to become the reality or else it falls apart. But it's never going to become the reality. That's the problem. Let's see what an expert on this field has to say about it. Larry the Cable Guy. Larry, what do you think? And that's stupid. Thanks, Larry. If the theory and, and the minds of these critical theorists, if it falls apart, then the utopia that they see at the end of the rainbow, as James Lindsay puts it, will fall apart as well. It will never come to fruition. Well, of course it won't because it's a utopia, and utopia is not for this world. That's for the next world. There is no paradise here. There's not going to be. And you can't ignore basic biological realities that everyone has known until five minutes ago because... Your vision of how things are supposed to work is not fitting with reality. In clown world, where they live, the differences between the sexes are a social construct. And gender and biological sex are different things. And in clown world, gender, as they use it, is a definable term. But here in reality, there are concrete differences, physical differences between men and women. In reality, there are only men and women. Biological sex actually exists. Gender either does not apply to human beings at all, up until John Money, it was just a, a, a linguistic concept, or it's a synonym for biological sex. If it's not, if gender is not a, 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 a synonym for biological sex, then it has no meaning. It can't be defined. Because when you say man or woman, as Matt Walsh always puts it, he, he Matt Walsh, who he's a little too gung-ho on this issue, he, I think, concerns himself with it way, 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 way too much. Um, and I, I think he's a little too heavy-handed about it. But he does make a really good point when he says, he always asks these gender theorists, what is a woman? He just wants them to give him a definition. And uh, as to my knowledge, he has never yet received a definition that made any sense at all. Because there can't be one if gender is not synonymous with biological sex. If gender is not just a euphemism for biological sex, you can't define it. It's undefinable. And this is why they are so dedicated to destroying anyone who speaks out against their nonsense. It's because it blows a hole in their entire theory. Their entire worldview is destroyed, and therefore the utopia is threatened. Well, 
All I can say is screw their utopia. Screw their critical theory nonsense. Okay, this is actually really causing problems for people, particularly women athletes who have worked just as hard as their male counterparts. This is not fair. And that we've got to put a stop to this. I, I, I can rarely think of any other aspect of human life where transgenderism uh, is really an issue. Right? This is one of those exceptions where, unfortunately, there is no easy answer. No one is going to be happy with a solution. Uh, but we can't keep going like this. This is ridiculous, and it's unfair, and we've got to stop it. Interested to hear your comments on uh, this topic, uh, please leave them below. If you think I'm way off base, if you think I'm wrong, by all means, say so. Um, but if you like what you've seen, hit that red subscribe button. Uh, give me a like on the video. Until next time, this is The Sovereign States. My name is Brian, and I appreciate you stopping by.